recording and all right good to go all right well good evening everyone uh, my name is bill leonard hopefully I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting everyone in here um, so this is number four of our coffee series uh, we have Mr. Mike Russoretto and Mr. Jorge Mascaro joining us to talk about the Bergen Catholic experience. So um, the Bergen Catholic academic experience, and they have a focus on the STEM curriculum as they both are in the STEM department. So Mr. Mascaro was my uh, JV and sophomore football coach while I was at Bergen Catholic and my uh, one of my computer applications teachers. And Mike Russoretto was a grade below me at Bergen Catholic. So I can tell you that these are two of the best. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Mascaro and Mr. Russoretto to talk a little bit about academics at Burton Catholic. Terrific. Uh, Mike, you want to go first? Sure. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe uh, throughout all these crazy times. Um, just know that Burton Catholic's here for you and anything that you may need. Obviously, tonight we're here uh, fielding all the questions that you guys may have in regards to STEM and anything else we can have. Uh, answered for you. Um, I'm actually a graduate, like Mr. Leonard said, of the class of 2011. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to be going into my what will be my fifth year teaching at Bergen Catholic. And it's all been in robotics and STEM. So pretty much at the beginning of my teaching career, I've gotten to dive into something that's been uh, pretty new on a lot of school fronts. Um, I teach every single as of this year, I teach every single grade level. So freshmen, sophomores, juniors and seniors, I have every person in the building. And I'm truly fortunate for that. Um, the freshmen and sophomores, uh, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Mascaro could jump in at any point. I'm sure he'll talk about this as well. Uh, the freshmen and sophomores go through kind of an interesting uh, dynamic when they get into the building. So freshmen wind up taking the intro to engineering course, which is what I teach, uh, the first and second quarter. And then the sophomores uh, take either health or gym in the first and second quarter, depends on their schedule. And then when the year flips to the third and the fourth, uh, the freshmen wind up going into help, I believe, and then the sophomores wind up coming to me for the third and fourth quarter. And then uh, I'll get into the projects a little bit later, maybe with some questions and stuff. And then when they become juniors, uh, we learn Python. So they come to me and learn coding. And then uh, for the first year, which was this year, I got to teach the digital media uh, production class, which was actually really interesting because it was kind of a curriculum that I, not that I came up with it by myself, but it was really, really fluid in terms of what the kids wanted to learn. And I kind of not turned it over to them, but I wanted them to have some uh, control because some kids did want to wind up focusing on certain creating creation of content because they wanted to go into some media class in college. Um, so all four of those boxes get checked between learning how to you know be an engineer and an architect going down that road all the way to creating content such as iMovie, uh, infographs, and a bunch of other stuff that I actually have here if you guys have any questions about them. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Mascaro, and then I guess right afterwards we'll answer any questions you may have. Okay. So um, good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jorge Mascaro. I am the um, Technology, Engineering, and Art uh, Chair uh, at Bergen. I graduated in 1984, uh, and I have a, a, a kind of a unique perspective uh, on uh, Bergen Catholic. Uh, because I've done just about everything. I've been and done just about everything at Bergen Catholic. Uh, as I said, I graduated in 1984. I was an uh, honors math science guy. Uh, I played football, was a two-year starter. I was involved with the yearbook, the math team, intramurals, and you know all kinds of other things. And then after graduation, I started coaching football right away. I was going to school locally, uh, and I started coaching football. Um, uh, right away in 1985. Uh, and then, you know, through the years and, and, and this and that, uh, I got involved with the Alumni Association, became a class chair, all that good stuff. And then one thing led to another, and I started teaching in 2007. Um, my oldest son just graduated, uh, well, not just graduated, graduated in 2017 uh, from Bergen, and he just finished up his junior year at, uh, at Stevens, he's going to the business school there. And then my youngest son just uh, is going to graduate from Bergen this year. He's a senior this year. Uh, and he's going to uh, University of Pittsburgh uh, to the business school out there, uh, hopefully in the fall. 
Um, you know, I've been, um, I teach uh, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science A, and, um, and Freshman Geometry, right? So I'm, I'm kind of all over the, uh, uh, kind of all over the, the map there uh, in terms of uh, 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 subject matter. Um, and I've also been on just, you know, countless committees and, and, and technology initiatives and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, I've really, you know, kind of seen uh, uh, Bergen Catholic, you know, through uh, a bunch of different eyes. Um, like I said, you know, as a, as a teacher, as a parent, as a student, as an athlete, as a chair, as a, as a you know, as all those other things, right? So um, just one of those things where, you know, I kind of, you know, understand um, all of the different perspectives that people bring uh, to Bergen Catholic. Um, in terms of the academic experience, right, I, I'm going to focus a little bit on the uh, technology that we have because it's so prevalent in everything that we're doing, especially right now. Um, we've been a one-to-one -one laptop school since the early 2000s, and then starting, um, uh, I think, uh, five years ago or so, maybe six years ago or so, we went to a, a two-to-one a uh, device where we had a MacBook Air and an iPad, and this, that's the current configuration uh, that all of our students have today. Um, the technology is integrated into everything that we do, right? So every class, it's not just, you don't just have computer science class, which you do, but the technology is integrated into everything that we do. So you're in math class, you're in English, you're in you know, Spanish, whatever it is, and the technology is just part of the experience, which has really uh, allowed us to be in a great position um, when all of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, virtual learning thing uh, uh, happened. Um, we were ready because most, if not all, of our classes up to uh, this point had some kind of uh, virtual learning component to them. Even when we were physically in the building, we were already doing some kind of virtual experience. So for example, right, my classes, um, kids never hand me a piece of paper uh, after they do their homework or when they finish a project or something like that, right? Everything is submitted online. So we use our, uh, our LMS, uh, uh, Learning Management System, Blackboard, Right, and everything gets submitted through there. All of my assignments get, get posted up there. All of you know the grade books, everything is online. So when all of this started back in March, um, we were already in the position to basically say, okay, we're going to take that physical environment that we were in and simply move it to a virtual setting. But it wasn't a it, it was a big deal, but it wasn't um, um, that big of a deal, if that makes any sense. Uh, it was a big deal in that, um, you know, the, 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 the personal um, touch kind of um, had, to, had to change, you know, so being physically in the classroom with the kids and having that uh, kind of energy and that sort of thing. Uh, that changed a little bit, but by going virtually online and basically continuing the classroom experience um, from basically our homes, and you know this is my classroom, um, what you're seeing right now, uh, and this is what the kids see, right? We just we kind of just kept going, and it wasn't um, um, it, it it wasn't it, it didn't feel uh, strange. Um, it didn't feel like we were doing like we were in over our heads or or anything like that. So we just kept going. We, we were in school on Thursday, um, whatever day that was, uh, the March 12 or whatever it was, I don't even remember. Um, and, and then we had a, a practice virtual day on Friday. And then over the weekend, we said, hey, we got we to gotta lock down for you know, however much time. And we've been in that situation ever since. And we never really missed a um, uh, we we never missed a day of class. We never missed a period. We never missed um, any kind of assignments, right? And we just kind of kept going in a, in a different situation. So we were very well positioned 
um, for that um, for that situation. And we've and we've continued all of our classes have continued, uh, you know, without missing a beat. Um, there were a couple of adjustments here and there on how to do certain things, um, but it wasn't anything out of you know out of the realm of possible. And I know a lot of other schools uh, had those had those problems. They were not ready to go. Uh, and we were, you know, so um, from a from a, an, a learning experience and, and, and who knows what's going to happen in, in the fall. Um, you know, I, I hope, I pray, I knock on wood, you know, that we'll be back on uh, just, you know, back in the building. But if, if we're not able to do that, we, um, you know, we're, we'll continue, right? We will continue doing the, the things that we're doing, having class every day, having every period. Uh, uh, no, you know, being a normal situation, the give and take between teachers, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the delivery of lectures and assignments, the uh, collection of homework, the, the assessment tests, uh, you know, tests and quizzes, you know, we'll keep going and, and just keep, you know, doing the things that we would normally do. So, um, you know, I hope that gives you a little bit of, uh, uh, of background there on, you know, what we've been doing and, and how we've been doing it and why, um, you know, we were in such good position. Um, so, but, uh, you know, at this point, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, if there are any uh, additional points, Mike, that you want to make or, or um, Billy, if there are any questions or anything, all right. Yeah, so we got uh, at least one question in the chat. Um, so, um, so the question was about our robotics program. So, Mr. Rosario, could you talk a little bit about um, the robotics program in the curriculum, also the extracurricular um, aspect to it? Absolutely, great question. Um, so, thank you for asking that question. I think it's extremely relevant with uh, with everything the way the world is going right now. Um, in the past, I want to say, you know, before the quarantine happened, before the whole pandemic happened, uh, myself, our other robotic teacher, Mr. Patel, and our principal, Mr. McElhaney, Mr. Mascaro was in on these talks as well. Um, we were all set to wind up getting our robotics club off the ground, ready to go for September. That was one of the initiatives that we set, I think, right when we got back from uh, Christmas break in January. So we planned to have that up in September, but with everything that went on, everyone kind of just making sure their classes and everything was okay, uh, we should have that up and running by October or November, um, willing that everything goes uh, according to plan. Uh, it's gonna be an FRC club. So right now, um, well, right now, well, this past school year, uh, when we were in there, before we all went to quarantine, there were a group of seniors that wound up starting this club, but it was very, very small. Uh, people could join, but it was a little more loose. It was a lot of, they were still competed for Bergen Catholic, but it was very, very loose. C kids came and went, um, but they had their core guys and they wanted to pass that down. And that, like I said, was one of the initiatives going forward to have it ready by September, but it should be up and running by October or November. Uh, and we're going to compete locally. Um, we're going to do everything in our power to wind up getting this. We're going to do it uh, safer. We're going to do it right. So we're going to put a little more planning into it. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, especially with, you know, the end of the year coming up. So we'll have a little more time to focus on it, but it should be up and running by uh, October or November. So just a slight delay as to where we were. And then in the curriculum too. So what um, the cl the courses that we offer in robotics, uh, could you talk about those as well? Yes. So the robotics classes that wind up uh, being taken by seniors is actually a really interesting one. So uh, to start off, you know, I'll start from the freshman and then I'll work all the way up to the senior because it, it kind of all becomes a progression. So when the freshmen come in, um, like I was saying, when I first got on here, uh, they pretty much learned very, uh, very basic principles of the, the design process with engineers, with architects. And then they take that knowledge, they move on to sophomore year where it just gets a little more intense. So uh, as a freshman, they'll build a skyscraper or, um, or an elevator or, or small little moving parts. And then they'll move on to the sophomore year where they'll, where they'll make uh, pistons that are in an engine. They'll make um, a more enhanced version of an elevator. Uh, they'll do a lot of different things that wind up. Um, and there's even one where we actually create a small car using reverse motion linkages. So that's awesome too. And then junior year, they actually get to code, right? They come to coding. So it's kind of a step back from the lab that we've done and they learn Python. Then they take that language and go into senior year where they get to build, and I believe it's in groups, Mr. Mascaro, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Patel's class, uh, it's, it's probably groups of two or three. We try to keep the groups as small as possible, even when they're freshmen, just so that way the, you know, they can socialize a little bit easier, even though some classes do get a little bit bigger. Um, but when they get to their senior year, they take everything that they've learned from their freshman, sophomore, and junior year, especially the coding, 
and they get to program a robot. So if we were in an open house right now, um, at any point in the year, there would probably be prototypes all over the robotics lab to where we could have, even have them functioning. So uh, Mr. Patel, who's like our other uh, robotics teacher, teaches them to um, to code these robots to, let's say, a hypothetical to go 10 paces up, pick up a water bottle, take that same track back. So it's pretty amazing stuff what they do in there inside of a, of a semester because I don't believe they're um, – their full uh, full year courses. No, it's definitely not a full year course. So again, I just uh, piggybacking off of what Mike said. Um, the the robotics course, basically, what they end up doing is they engineer the robots first. They build them, mm -hmm. and then they uh, then they go ahead and program them and and, and run them through their paces. So uh, yeah, it's a very very cool um, uh, uh, course. Um, and I, I see in the chat, right? Is it required the freshman and sophomore uh, the freshman and sophomore technology classes, right, with the pre-engineering and that sort of thing, those are part of the core curriculum. Uh, but then after after that, then they get into they start getting into some electives. Um, in in the junior year, um, the uh, students have uh, the uh, the possibility of taking AP Computer Science principles, which I teach. Uh, and if they don't take that, then they'll take um, the uh, junior technology course, which is the coding in Python uh, uh, that uh, Mr. Russoretto teaches, right? So there's, there's two basic, uh, you know, elements there. Uh, and then uh, heading into senior year, then they have the opportunity um, of taking AP Computer Science A. So where AP Computer Science principles is kind of like an intro to technology um, uh, uh, kind of course that you would take in, uh, in college, first semester college, usually where um, you see, it's a little bit about everything. It's a little bit about the internet. It's a little bit about coding. It's a little bit about uh, networking. It's a little bit about uh, uh, computer architecture and software, hardware, that sort of thing. The AP Computer Science A class in the senior year is then uh, strictly a coding class, object-oriented design um, uh, coding class. And so what they do is they take their, what the, the basic um, skills that they learned in Python um, as a learn to code language. And then we, we transfer those skills over to an object oriented design uh, environment uh, using Java. So that's, that's kind of the, the technology progression uh, through the school. Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat, but um, I have a question for you guys. So can you talk a little bit about um, extra help and enrichment? So students who might need a, a little bit of extra help, um, how do our faculty members uh, provide those resources for students? Sure. Great question. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, um, no, I got up on this one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, extra help is offered every day um, from, from at least two to three o'clock in the afternoon. So we finish the school day um, at two o'clock, and then uh, teachers basically, um, you know, pick a pick a, a classroom or uh, pick a table in the library or something like that, um, and then we're there until about three o'clock or so every day. And if a student needs extra help uh, in you know in any subject, he's he's free to you know kind of come and go as as he pleases. Uh, you know, some of the extra help sessions get uh, very popular before a quiz or a test, um, you know, or, or towards the end of the quarter or something like that. Um, I'm always, you know, teasing my students that, uh, you know, I get lonely during the week and no one comes to visit me, um, you know, un unless there's something major coming up or something like that. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that is always uh, available, um, you know, and, and not only, you know, I, I don't want to say we have to do it. We like to do it. We like to see the kids come in, right, and 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 ask that question that maybe they didn't get to in class, or you know that uh, maybe they were too shy to to ask in class, or or something like that. Um, usually, the extra help, you know, some kids are a little reticent about coming for extra help because they might they they might you know oh I don't need extra help you know I can figure it out myself. But usually, the kids that come into extra help, the average extra help session lasts you know, five or 10 minutes, um, usually they come in and they're missing like this little, you know, just the little thing. Um, they're just not quite getting, you know, this concept here, this piece of a concept there. They come in five minutes later, you know, we've done a couple of uh, 
practice problems, whatever it is, we've gone through a couple of different things, you know, and the light bulb goes off and, 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 you know, and, and there you go. So, you know, I, I'm sure Mike, you know, you have a, a similar experience with that. I'm sure. Yep. And uh, I, I'm going to echo everything that you said. And on top of that, um, I actually have the pleasure of running our activity program at Bergen Catholic as well. Uh, and our activity program, just to kind of give you the broad overview of it, every Tuesday and Thursday, the kids get to go to a club or an activity that they get to choose. It's 30 minutes. So uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, when there's not a mass or any type of assembly, um, the school day ends at 1.30. And then freshmen, sophomores, and juniors and the seniors who choose to participate. So that's like a senior privilege to where they don't have to participate, but it's off the charts how many seniors actually wind up being in leadership courses or leadership roles, I should say, as they progress through. So a lot of the seniors do wind up staying. Um, I, was, I think it was like 80% this year of seniors wound up being in uh, leadership roles, which is awesome. So uh, when I took this over, uh, I believe back in last July, two things that I really wanted to, to kind of hammer down on was number one, kids who, like Mr. Mascaro was saying, were a little bit nervous to ask a question in class. I graduated from Bergen and I was very nervous to ask questions that sometimes, uh, especially in subjects that I was a little unsure about. Uh, sometimes courses move a little bit too fast, but there's always help available. So two of the things that we did, and uh, they're going to carry over into next year and hopefully for, for the foreseeable future, is that our enrichment program, um, every subject has one teacher in it per Tuesday and Thursday. It's never the same one uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So they'll rotate, but there's always a teacher, whether it's their teacher or somebody else. For example, on Tuesdays, um, uh, Coach Bell will be in there uh, reviewing history in, in the library. So it's very quiet. It's very, uh, very, very, very uh, one on one if they need it. Uh, and then for kids who need even more extra help or they uh, they find comfort in going to our student success center, they can register for that as an activity and go there every Tuesday and Thursday and get the necessary help that they need. So there's always help, whether it's uh, in the mornings prior to class. Uh, uh, in the activity period, which is technically still in school, one thirty to 2 o'clock, and then uh, even after school as well. Okay, another question I got in the chat. So if a student is not placed in honors uh, in their freshman year, can they end up moving into honors maybe in their sophomore year, junior year? Um, so can you talk a little bit about the uh, placement process and how it might change as they progress their, their years at Bergen County? Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, yeah, we do not have fixed tracks at, at Bergen. Um, a student who comes in who uh, maybe didn't qualify for an honors uh, subject, uh, and we don't, we, you know, we don't have like all honors kids or all, you know, all CP kids or anything like that. Um, you know, every course is a little bit different. Um, you know, and that goes back to when I was there. Um, you know, I was um, uh, honors math and science, right? I was not honors English. I didn't belong in honors English, uh, but I belonged in honors math. So that's what I, you know, that's what I ended up doing. Uh, so uh, absolutely, when if you're if you're in a, a non honors course, uh, and you're, uh, you know, and let's say that you know you have a, a just a terrific year. Um, you can then, you know, um, not even petition. Usually the, the teachers themselves say, Hey, you know what? Uh, you, you know, your grades are good enough for next year. Would you like to, you know, make the move to, to honors? And, you know, I've had that conversation with students, um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes they're excited about it and sometimes they're a little hesitant about it. Um, but it's just one of those things where we're constantly evaluating kids. We don't evaluate the kid just when he comes in as a freshman, right? Every, every year um, we're looking at, every teacher is looking at his students and saying, you know, yes, this kid, this, this student is placed correctly, right? He, he, he's, he's where he should be, or, you know, this, this student is, you know, excelling. Um, let's, let's talk about maybe moving him to an honors program, or even if you're in the honors program and, and you're struggling, you know, now, you know, now we're having that conversation where, um, you know, hey, you know, maybe, maybe this is just a little too fast for you. We need to slow, you know, you need to slow down a little bit or something like that. So we're constantly evaluating uh, students, right, uh, all the way through, right, from, from, you know, until they graduate. So, uh, yeah, there is always uh, the possibility of movement, uh, movement up. Yes, definitely. Okay, and we got a question going back to activities. So, Mr. Russoretto, can you talk a little bit about um, what, so the question was, what exactly are the activities on Tuesday and Thursday, um, and is enrichment just 
extra help? Okay, so great question. So the activities, and I love talking about this in any regard, uh, it's student run, right? So all the activities that are available have been started by a student, whether it was the year before, 10 years before, sometimes 15 or 20 years before. Um, we have activities that wind up ranging from charities such as Operation Smile. Uh, we have charities that were, um, we have activities that work on the yearbook. We have uh, art classes that want, like an architecture club that's sought by our art teacher, our teacher uh, Nedco. Uh, we also have an intramural basketball league. So there's such a range of different activities. And I think next year there's one that's going to be an environmental science. I got an email actually this morning from a student who actually wants to start a beekeeping club. Uh, one of our freshmen wants to start a beekeeping club. So that's pretty cool. So all these kids come up with these different ideas. And as long as they get like maybe nine or 10 kids to, to sign up for it and a moderator, they get to do it. Uh, a few other examples are like photography and the, the school newspaper, the Herald, things like that. It's really awesome to see the kids kind of take lead and the, the teachers just kind of take a step back and they just become moderators. Um, in regards to the enrichment, uh, it is considered extra help, but the kids, once they register for it, uh, that must mean that they uh, are not as comfortable in that subject. So at least for, I would say for the first two or three weeks of the year, or for at least the foreseeable future, when kids wind up going into enrichment, they're going to wind up staying there. So typically kids don't wind up signing up for enrichment right away. And I'm going to explain that now. So if a student, like let's, let's take a freshman, they're new, they wind up getting their feet on the ground, you know, maybe three, four weeks in a month in, and they're off and running, right? They find out that they're struggling in, uh, in, bi in biology. They can go to enrichment with another biology teacher or the one that they have in class and really get the extra help that they need. Uh, if they want to move out of there, they, they're certainly more than capable of doing that. They would just have to come to me and go to the, uh, the new moderator and ask permission. But usually kids that wind up going into enrichment wind up staying there. So that way they can review. It's just extra assurance for them. Yeah. So I, I, the thought process behind our activity period, so it's the last period of the day on Tuesdays and Thursdays, is to build what are usually thought of as after school activities into mm -hmm. the school day because we have so many students who come from all over the state of New Jersey, New York, um, who have to take the bus home. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. buses leave at 2.15 and there's no negotiating bus times. So to give those students the opportunity to still uh, get involved, we build activities and clubs into the school day. And obviously there's gonna be activities that require more uh, time than just that period. Um, and they will meet after school and our students will have to uh, make accommodations to get home uh, just like they would for any other after school activity. But um, we really force our students to get involved. So there's no, there's, you can't be a student who just goes to the school day from eight o'clock to two o'clock. Um, you have to get involved. And most of our students obviously love the idea of getting involved, but um, we, we, we really do, um, you know, kind of build it into the schedule and it allows students to do uh, different things after school, whether it's get home on the bus, uh, play a sport, uh, practice with the jazz ensemble, anything that happens after school that doesn't conflict with them being involved with clubs and activities. Yeah, and just to jump in real quick after you, Mr. Leonard, uh, I just looked at my iPad, so I had a couple notes written down for today. Um, I ran the numbers probably right before this all happened. I kind of wanted to see where we were at with activities. And I said 80% before with the seniors that were uh, still in their same activities. It's actually 93%. It was awesome. I know that's a very specific amount, but it just goes to show that when these kids get involved, they stick it on through. And um, a little bit of a personal uh, experience here. Uh, my junior year, I went from going into study hall uh, on a Tuesday into Crusaders for Christian Action, which is one of our other charity uh, activities that we have. I fell in love with it. And then when I wound up going to college, I started a charity that's still going on there now. And we raised thousands of dollars to keep people in their homes in uh, central Pennsylvania uh, who were affected by uh, cancer. It was incredible. And I, I attribute all of that to the activity program. And just so one other question we had in the chat. So if a student goes to enrichment, he won't be able to participate in, let's say, the newspaper. So um, they have the option to go to enrichment on either Tuesday or Thursday yes. or both. Um, and then an activity like the newspaper, for example, that's one that does meet after school as well. Mm -hmm. um, so even if they can't be there for activity period, they can still be a member of the newspaper club. Um, and you know they, they need much more time than just the last period of the day um, to write their articles, do their interviews, uh, do all the editing. Um, so for some clubs that really only meet during the activity period, yes, technically, if they were doing enrichment, 
Um, it would be in place of those, but a lot of our activities also uh, spend time after school. And, you know, there's always the possibility for enrichment on Tuesday, an activity or club on Thursday. Um, and you can always move in between doing yep. enrichment um, back to your club if you feel like uh, you're comfortable in the subject. Or uh, there's the possibility of doing both your club Tuesday and Thursday and then just going after school for like the office hours that our teachers have from two o'clock to three o'clock. So um, we're very flexible. If you need extra help, we will find a time for you to get extra help. Doesn't matter if you take the bus home after school. Doesn't matter if you play a sport after school. Our teachers find time uh, to give extra help. All right. Uh, do we have any other any other questions? You could ask about anything. Feel free to ask anything about robotics, about STEM, about our curriculum, about what we do in class. Uh, we actually have, and I'm like one of the least uh, social media savvy, like mid 20 year olds that are out there. Um, I created a uh, Instagram for our, for our students. It's called Bergen Robotics. If you want to see what we do on a daily basis, uh, I haven't updated in a while, obviously, probably since about uh, January or February. Uh, but you can go in, we have videos, we have pictures, you can see the things that we build, the groups that we have, the room that we're in, the equipment that we use. Uh, you can you can see all that. It's there in Bergen Robotics if you happen to have an Instagram. All right, well, if we don't have any other questions, um, I guess we will be wrapping this up. So again, I just wanna thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we have our next coffee series tomorrow evening with Mr. McElhenney, our principal. Um, and he also is a great resource for talking about the academic experience of Bergen Catholic. So if anyone wants to log on tomorrow, um, you know, he's a great resource. This is going to be his 14th year as the principal of Bergen Catholic. So he started when I was a freshman. Um, and to have that you know, stability in the administration, I think it, it really does go a long way. Um, so that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, you have access to the principal before school starts for all of the incoming parents, uh, which is really a great opportunity. Um, so for tonight, again, I just want to thank Mr. Mike Rusoretto and Mr. Jorge Mascaro, two awesome Bergen Catholic alums, teachers, coaches, some of my favorite colleagues. Um, so this is all going to be recorded, and it will be sent out to anyone if you want to go back to look at it. Um, and we hope you'll join us for our next coffee series tomorrow. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for good night. Uh, good night.